Welcome everyone to the discography tier list for Bring Me the Horizon. As of recording this, we are less than a week after post-human next gen's release, which gives us enough time to kind of gauge where to put it on a spot and a tier list from gold to trash. Thank you everyone in the chat for joining me live. You're all going to vote on this too. I'm very curious what you guys think of the band from Sheffield who started Deathcore to Metalcore to whatever they want. Most recently, an electronic emo album. That gets a little heavy. I have a link in the description on YouTube for all my previous discography tier lists as well for many bands, some of which have guest hosts, some of which have an audience like this. Thank you all for checking them out. Let's talk about Bring Me the Horizon. I know I'm sometimes an outlier and sometimes everyone agrees with what I'm saying and sometimes everyone disagrees, but I'm curious to see what about this one. We're covering the six full release LPs from Bring Me the Horizon and the two post-human EPs. We will not be covering Music to Listen to EP, the one with the impossibly long title that I can never remember. The reason why is because that was released with remixes in mind. A lot of that music is never played live and it's not really treated as such as an EP in the main course discography. We're talking about these albums that you see on the screen right now, going all the way back to Count Your Blessings for 2006. Bring Me in the Horizon has had albums released for almost 20 years as of this recording. Count Your Blessings, as I see it, is a great starting point for a band to show how they've evolved. Ollie Sykes and everyone involved has definitely changed and matured in different ways over the years since 2006, haven't we all? And I had not heard Bring Me the Horizon at this point. I was later to the game. I was around 2011, 2010 mostly for me when I jumped on the Bring Me the Horizon train. So I had to go back and listen to Count Your Blessings and songs like Pray for Plagues, which is an amazing album opener. Here's my hot take on this album. It is the combination of Deathcore and a Sugar Rush. That is exactly what it is. Just chaotic, unfiltered energy and a wild, furious anger, noise, you name it. Not a speck of focus, just a whole lot of passion and energy and rah-rah. Call it that, it's gonna upset a lot of people. It's not the worst thing ever, and I don't think this is trash by any means, but looking at it back in 2006, this was definitely a post-high school type album. You could tell it was just furious anger, playing deathcore and screaming chugga-chugs for the sake of volume. Not what we have today for Bring Me the Horizon. You all said the same thing I said. Count your blessings, aluminum. I don't think that's a bad spot either. This is the start of a young band that tried to make it in that deathcore scene when metalcore and deathcore were really starting to kick the door down with new bands blossoming, not on MTV and not with radio help. Uh, Pray for Plagues, I'd still stand by a great opener for an album. We then moved to 2008 and things pick up dramatically with Suicide Season. And you know what? Count your blessings being this unfocused sugar rush of a deathcore album. Suicide Season got the focus. They had that anger, they had that energy. <laughs> and someone just said, now the actual debut. That is correct. Suicide Season takes the strengths of Count Your Blessings and amplifies them completely. You could tell they really sat down and tried to improve on what they had before. It really shines with stuff like that. Chelsea Smile, I feel, is the true song that put them on the map. And once Chelsea Smile started introducing people to Bring Me the Horizon, that's when I think a lot of the audience started coming over from outside UK. It's also much better produced, yes. And I feel like Count Your Blessings was not at a spot to be uh, a very expensive production, and that's fine. Suicide Season was much better produced, and I think they had the more means to accomplish that. Diamonds Aren't Forever, another good song that I really enjoy off that album. I have my notes right here. I just wanted to mention that one, too. I think Suicide Season was definitely the big introduction and a proper format, almost as if Count Your Blessings was the practice run. And that's not to say it's a terrible album, but Suicide Season, by comparison, leaps and bounds. It's not perfect. There are some songs that really are repetitious of each other, and I do think that's the biggest holdback, but at the same time, you can hear so much more focus and drive and creativity in Suicide Season in those songs. And Ali Sykes focusing and training his voice to give that death growl, but also have some elevation going up and down in the range. It's not just full dragonborn shout voice. I feel this has a lot of potential to surprise some people with this one. But at the same time, this is the one that a lot of people refer to, especially the longtime fans that are upset of Bring Me the Horizon's current direction. Direction, 
They're wanting more of this. I at least see the argument for this one. For those fans who really want the original Death Corps style, they want more Suicide Season. I at least understand that. 16 years passed. This album can now drive in the United States. You guys said a silver with 56% of the votes. You know what? That's fair. Bronze, 33%. Gold, 11%. You guys said the same thing I did. I'm glad we're seeing eye to eye on some of this already. Well, bam. I think that's a great start. For first two albums and your second album's already in the silver, you're doing pretty good. We then move on to 2010. There is a heaven, believe me, I've seen it. There is a hell, let's keep it a secret. This is the slight direction change. Just as focused, still wanting to do deathcore, but wanting to experiment and collaborate just a little bit. Biggest standout on an album like this was when they brought in lights the Canadian singer. And that's a name that was much bigger in the 2010s. Bringing in lights to do a few songs on There Is A Hell made this album stand out in a great way. The production was different again, but not to a lesser quality, just different sounding. There was still a ton of energy. There was still a touch of motion and passion and anger and a whole lot of range in guitar work. Drumming was still really strong. Ollie Sykes is now playing around with his voice a little bit more. He's doing a lot of different stuff with that. The songs Crucify Me and Don't Go With Lights were exceptional and I think something not many people were expecting from Bring Me The Horizon, especially with her style compared to Deathcore. Not something you would associate together, but it works really well in my opinion. Also, a song like Home Sweet Hole has such a catchy chorus for something kind of dark. That's how you know Bring Me The Rise is doing something right. I feel this is a good follow-up to Suicide Season. I've seen so many arguments of which album people prefer of this and Suicide Season, and I understand both sides of the argument as well. I know what I prefer, which one. I want to see what you guys say. But the collaborative work with Lights and the continued creativity just starting to expand a little from Suicide Season to an album like this shows that Bring Me The Horizon were much more than one note deathcore. I also said this is a silver album for There Is A Hell. What did you guys say? You guys said gold on this one. That's interesting. I don't know if I would go gold on this, but you guys said significantly gold. 56% gold, 22% silver. You guys really enjoy this album much more than I did. And that's fine. huh? Do I cave and put it with gold or do I say it's silver? You know what? I'm willing to cave. You know why? Because this was a more creative effort and that proof of it not being a one note deathcore band. Yeah, that does step out a little bit too. Uh, one over on this one. Here you go. We then venture in to 2013, and before 2013, Ollie Sykes and company met a man named Jordan Fish, multi-instrumentalist and producer who gave much more of a vision of what Bring Me The Horizon could be. Bring Me The Horizon would not be where it is today without Jordan Fish. Not even close. I don't know what Bring Me The Horizon would be or if they would even have a fraction of the popularity they have today in 2024, if not for all of the efforts and songs and albums that Jordan Fish was a key part of. But everything changed as Jordan Fish stepped forward to also bring in Sepp Eternal. For every meme you've ever seen of This Is Sandpit Turtle, you owe Jordan Fish a little bit of respect and a nod to the man who helped make this. See, someone just said, this is Sandpit Turtle. Mm -hmm. You can take songs like Sleepwalking, which was the first one I heard from this album. You could take something like Shadow Moses. There are so many tracks on this album that are key songs to elevate Bring Me The Horizon to true mainstream. So many people think this is the polarizing album for Bring Me The Horizon, not so much for the whole populace and for heavy music fans, but for direct Bring Me The Horizon music fans, because the people that wanted only deathcore and the heavier style did not like this venture. This is more formatted to music, but some of it's done so well that it launched Bring Me The Horizon. This is where they started doing headline tours through the US that sold real well. And it was a trajectory that was launched from this album. Can You Feel My Heart was a big one. That was the sing-along song. And even that, I don't feel holds up as well to many other tracks on the album. Go to hell for heaven's sakes. You know, I think it's Shadow Moses. I think it's Sleepwalking. There are so many songs on that album 
that represent what Bring Me the Horizon is capable of to a general audience instead of just one lane. This is the album that's definitive for what Bring Me the Horizon was going to be going forward and in a good way. While you're voting, please enjoy our guest Bring Me the Horizon fan. Well, I hope your votes are honest and sincere because we have a dog who really wants to know what you think. I think I know what he wants. I can't see what it is, but I said Sempaternal as gold. What did the audience say? Oh, you all agreed with me, or almost all of you agreed with me. 80% gold, 20% silver, no bronze, aluminum, trash. You guys all held this one pretty high. A golden goose. Yes. First half of the albums we're talking about for Beam of the Horizon, pretty good start. With a dog by my feet that I hope I don't step on. He's a good dog and a Bring Me the Horizon fan. I have the dog. We now move to 2015, where the Deathcore fans abandoned all hope. When as soon as they heard the song drown, they knew that Bring Me the Horizon was not going back to that heavy style. That's the spirit was the path going forward for Bring Me the Horizon. For all the songs on this album that showcase what Bring Me the Horizon can do, what Jordan Fish was capable of with production and song design, as well as Ollie Sykes' singing ability, which a lot of people were not as familiar with, I have to say That's the Spirit did a good job. It's not my favorite Bring Me the Horizon album. There are songs that I just have no preference for, but there are also songs on there that I think are great. Avalanche is one of my favorite Bring Me the Horizon tracks, an underrated gem. Doomed is a great opener. There are many other songs on there. It's a little bit of a mixed bag, but the high points are good. Just as someone said, the high points are so good, but there's still an easy silver in your mind fair. Sam, you like Avalanche. It has solid tracks, but then some I don't care for. And that's fine too. Mixed on, that's the spirit. And I think a lot of people are. This is the follow-up to what many people think put Bring Me the Horizon on the mainstream map. And also, that's the spirit had a long shelf life. It did really well. Big tours, big spots on commercials, in sports, WWE started working with Bring Me the Rise at that point. There was a lot of things going for the band. And another good point, this album produced a lot of concert staples that are still being played today. So where do we put that's the spirit? Let's see what you guys think. He's licking his paw. He is a well-behaved doggo. Hygiene imp is important to this pepper. Without looking, I put this in silver. I'm more of a high bronze, low silver for That's the Spirit. The songs that are good really work, but there are some songs that fall flat, to say the least. You guys said silver as well. A lot of you. 83% said silver. 8% gold, 8% bronze also. No aluminum or trash. That's good. And I said silver for this one as well. Wabam. Good spot. Only one album so far of five was one that I did not have ranked this way, so... You guys are voting pretty much in line with I am. Let's see how long that goes when we get to Amo. In 2019, this was the album I thought Bring Me The Horizon was losing the script a little bit. I figured their experimentation was gonna go in different directions. I personally did not think Amo was a bad album, but it did very little for me. A song like Sugar Honey, Ice and Tea as a single was grating to my ears. When there was so much more electronic work and smooth songs on there that did showcase what Bring Me The Rise could do well. I liked Amo to a certain point. However, it's not something I've gone back to. It's not an album that has a lot of flair for me, a lot of high points, both advertising what Bring Me The Rising can do and what some of their best stuff is. There's not a lot of live songs that are played for this one as well. And a lot of people have different opinions about Amo, and that's fine. I totally get that. I'm not saying this was a cash in either because it definitely wasn't. Bring Me The Horizon could have just cashed in something and done That's The Spirit Part 2, which this album is definitely not. I just feel this album does not have as much of a positive identity that reflects what Bring Me The Horizon is capable of in one direction or another. Rather, this is just electronic beep boop, have some smooth jazz. Sometimes Ollie will scream while he's at it. Mantra and Wonderful Life are definitely my faves. I like In the Dark personally. Wonderful Life is a fun one. There's not enough songs on there that really warrant me going back to the album, though. That's not to say I hated it. It's just more to say it wasn't for me. That's the best way I can describe 
my amo for amo, my love, get it? And again, don't get it wrong. I do not hate this album by any stretch. I just feel it falls flat in a lot of areas. So what did the over electronic and smoother style of Bring Me The Horizon do with Amo? And what did that do for all of you? I remember when Wonderful Life was a big push single as well. That did get a lot of good attention. And listening to that, it did make me think a little bit, okay, I at least see where they're going with it. Boy, did I take a left turn when Amo came out though. And now he's just resting. He's a Bring Me The Horizon fan, not happy with what I said about Amo apparently. That's too bad, Ivan. I put this one at a bronze. I don't think it's bad enough to go aluminum, but I don't think it's silver. And that was my rationale for this as well. At 64%, you guys said the same. Bronze. Silver 18%, gold and aluminum 9% each. I think that's fair. It's also an album that does get forgotten more often than not, and is mostly talked about when people want to talk about if they like it or not, as opposed to what their favorite moments are. Putting the baggie into the bronze. Less than two years later, Right before pandemic hit, we got hit with post-human survival horror, an eight-track EP filled with collaborations with big names that made sure we were all aware Bring Me The Horizon is full of ideas, had tons of story, knew what to do with all that energy and focus and drive, and channeled it into something awesome. When I first heard post-human, I loved it. I didn't think every song was perfect. I didn't think every collaboration was on point, but then the more I listened to it as a full, complete eightless track album, as an EP, I realized this is much more of a collaborative work with the band and other people, as well as a long thought out process. At the time, they announced this as a four EP series. This was a huge first step. They made me care about Youngblood, a name I didn't really care about at all, in a song like Obey. They knocked it down with Kingslayer, an amazing song, and somehow just as good live with Baby Metal. I got to see that live with Baby Metal at Sick New World a few weeks ago. It was great. They had the best Amy Lee song in a good 15 years on this album. That's including everything Evanescence has done recently. I'm not a huge fan of recent Evanescence. I'm sorry. I know that's gonna upset some people, but there's so much good on this album and creative work that it can't be stressed enough. They know what to do with collaborations. And then you have a song like Teardrops, which dominated radio. If there were stations or especially rock stations that were iffy on Bring Me The Horizon, they pushed that to the side for Teardrops. This album had BMTH's best hot streak. Personally, your favorite from Bring Me The Horizon. There isn't a song I did not like. Fair. Let's see what you guys thought. I already know what I think. I think you can kind of tell what I think, too. This dog will stand up and start barking if you vote incorrectly on this one. Just a heads up. It's weird to think that Post-Human Survival Horror is well over four years old now. It's been that long. If it's not clear about my praise for it already, I said gold for Survival Horror. Most of you did too. 70% gold, 30% silver, which is fair also. Again, I didn't love every single track on this album, but the songs I really enjoyed, I think are staples permanently for Bring Me The Horizon, and there's not a bad song on it. This is gold. On a short album, too. That's right. Ludens was technically the first single for survival horror for the video game. Um, Death Stranding? Is that the one? And Mick Gordon of Doom fame knew what he was doing with the album. Yes, he did, as he usually does. Gold, easily. Mick Gordon helps everyone that he performs with. Three teeth, motionless and white. You get Mick Gordon involved, you're going to have a good time. Survival horror was proof. And now we go to less than a week ago as of this recording. This is May 2024. The surprise EP when they finally got it all together and said, finally, let's just pull the Band-Aid off and release Next Gen. This unfortunately does not have the full involvement with Jordan Fish, who left the band months ago. It still has some songs that are produced with him, but it still also features many collaborations. Dream of the Horizon did not wrap it up with that. They have songs featuring Under Oath, which is a big name to work with something like that. They toured together back in 2017. I remember shooting that tour. It was a lot of fun. Bring Me The Horizon have a lot of stuff that works on this. My wife and I really enjoy Lost. That was one of the singles that really hooked us. I do not love every single. A song like Die For You and Dark Side really don't do that much for me. To my pleasant surprise, many of the deep cuts that came with the album really did something for me. Utopia, I thought was great. There's shades of Deftones and the Smashing Pumpkins throughout the album. They aimed for an emo album, and then they expanded on that with more electronic work, guitars, good, solid singing, collaborations galore, and a lot of people 
who say they love different songs. Kool-Aid you love, Dark Side Slander. I'm just saying I didn't care for it as much as the other singles like Lost. My biggest knock for the album, one, the OST tracks really don't add that much. Two, the final track in over seven minutes did not need to be seven minutes. I understand there's patience and a build off to some stuff like that. It did not need to be seven minutes. Kool-Aid I thought had good hook. Lost I thought had a great hook. And there are other songs on there that I think work really well. I'm a big fan of Utopia. I'm a big fan of how the album opens with Utopia and then Kool-Aid. And then you have so many other songs that work well. Top 10 Statues That Cried Blood. That's an amazing title, but also pretty catchy. I don't think this warranted the track listing and length that it was. That does not diminish how good the album is. I enjoy most of this album and I have already gone to it several times. Transitions in the album work very well as well. They do. A lot of songs bleed into each other very well, but this is definitely a worthy follow-up to Survival Horror by a long shot. This definitely fits right in. Great continuation. Heard a lot of these songs live too. Not a lot, but I heard several of these songs live. They work great. This dog behind me is very happy with how most of this tier list has gone. I said Next Gen was silver. What did you guys think? You guys mostly agreed with me. 82% silver, 18% gold, no bronze, aluminum, or trash. I think that's a great spot for it. It doesn't work as beautifully and it didn't knock people away like post-human survival horror did, but Next Gen still works in a lot of different ways and is worthy of silver. This is what we have for a tier list. I think that works pretty well. Only one album I ranked differently than all of you. Let's see if this will zoom in well. Focus, okay. Yeah, there you go. See? I didn't cheat. It was only There Is A Heaven that I put it silver, but you guys wanted gold. Everything else is where I had it. That being said, as you take a final look at the tier list, if you're watching this on YouTube, where would you rank each album if you wildly disagreed or you couldn't vote with everyone else on Twitch? If you didn't vote on Twitch, why not? It's free. Thank you all for checking this out. Let me know what you guys think of the new EP Next Gen in the comments and let me know where you would put each album. Thank you guys for hanging out with me, especially you in the chat live. Thank you very much. Thank you all again to all the Remy Horizon fans. Thank you for checking this out. Please share it on Reddit, on Facebook pages, whatever you want. Bring back Baby Metal for another collaboration and better yet, go on tour with each other in the States. I think that's a genius idea that would print money.